Praise the Lord. Our message today is out of Proverbs chapter 3. Starting verse 5. It's called Direction from God. Proverbs chapter 3, starting in verse 5. It says, Now trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Uh, it's interesting because it's an either or. Uh, you can trust in the Lord with all your heart. This isn't an intellectual exercise. We're talking about le leaning on your own understanding. Understanding is something that's intellectual. But trusting the Lord with all your heart is not something intellectual. It's emotional. You either trust someone or you don't trust someone. Now, sometimes we base that trust on what we know about people or what we think we know. That's, the, that's where the intellectual part comes in. But if you notice, for the most part, when you keep the intellectual out of it, you, you'll make a right choice. Lean into your own understanding is always limit, limiting. Why? Because we, we know very little. Uh, it's much like um, we're all blind. And someone comes along and says, well, I'll take you where you want to go. Now, you're either going to say yes or no, depending on whether you think you can trust them or not. But if you don't know them, you have no factual basis to trust them or not to trust them. Children naturally, instinctively trust their parents. Sometimes the trust is misplaced, but they always instinctively trust them. And that's why God said he wants us to be like little children, to trust him. Why? Well, he's already proven he died on the cross for us. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. This is something that comes from here. It's not rational. It's like you don't trust him because you trust him because you trust him. The same way a child trusts a parent for no objective reason. It's just their parents. They're supposed to be trusted. And lean not onto your own understanding. Because, like I said, you can't, you can't understand God. First of all, if you served the God you could understand, he wouldn't be worth serving. So you trust God because you know that he's good. And you also know that he's all-powerful. Good reason to trust him. But you can't trust them on the basis of what you know intellectually. You either trust somebody in your heart or you don't. Like I said, trust is something that is in your heart. It's not intellectual. Well, I'll trust them because. It's not usually how it works. When you enter the marriage, you trust somebody. If there's lots of people you see get married, it's like, this doesn't look like it's going to end well. Because they want to trust trust, but they don't, they don't know the person. <laughs> They have all kinds of reasons not to trust, but it's not about what they know, it's about what they want to believe. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. Why? Well, verse 6, is says, in all your ways acknowledge him. This is really important. In everything that you do, in everything that you say, in everything that you think, <laughs> acknowledge God. Why? next verse, and he shall direct your paths. Now, first of all, you acknowledge him because he's there. It's kind of funny, but people in a general context, even Christians I've noticed, it's like they live their life and it's like God isn't there. It's like he's an absentee God. He's up there, but we're down here, and it's like, so he's just doing his thing up there, and I'm doing my thing down here, and, and we'll, we'll, meet, we'll catch up on Wednesdays and Sundays. But it just, it's not like that. <laughs> He's always, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, he's there. He's saying acknowledge the fact. Recognize the fact. When you are doing your dirt, when you're thinking your dirt, <laughs> recognize he's there. Why? It'll make you think twice about doing it. <laughs> It'll help you to keep on path of righteousness. It says here, he will direct your paths. So it's like, okay... I really want to do bad, but God, I know you're watching, you're hearing, you're listening. It's like, I need some help here. Because I know what I want, 
and I know this isn't good for me. It's sin. But we're not supposed to like sin. Why? Because ultimately, it costs us and it never delivers. It's a cost for which you always pay more than what you get out of it. Sin is bad. It's bad for us. It's bad for us in this life. It's bad for us in the next life. God says don't do it, not because he can say don't do it, although he can say. He doesn't just say don't do it because I feel like saying it. He says, he tells us not to do things because it's bad for us. Or he tells us to do things because it's good for us. Acknowledge him in whatever you're thinking, in whatever you're doing, whatever you're speaking. And what will happen? He'll keep you in his paths. He'll keep you in, he'll direct your paths. He'll keep you on the right path. Now, why is that important? Remember, just you. Sundays ago, I was speaking about the two paths Jesus spoke about. There's one path that's broad and leads to hell and destruction. But he said then there's another one that's this is a very small gate, and it's a very narrow path that leads to righteousness. He says then, if you find it, if you find the entrance, let alone get onto the path. What is interesting about this path is that it starts off difficult, and in the natural, it really has a sense of disappearing unlike the path to unrighteousness. The path to unrighteousness, everybody follows that path the same way. I mean, drugs is a wide path that a lot of people run on. And immorality is a wide path. And, and alcoholism is a wide path. And, you know, immorality is a long, nice wide path. These paths, it, he didn't, the enemy doesn't have to come up with something new because they always just work so good. They've always worked so good. But the path of righteousness, like I said, is not obvious and it gets even less obvious. But it's interesting because right in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, it says something that's quite interesting. It says, the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more into the perfect day. Why is that important? It gets more and more obvious as you walk the path. Because in the natural, the path gets less and less obvious. Now you've got to ask yourself, why is the path in the natural less and less obvious, even though in the spiritual it gets more and more obvious? And the answer is because that path is a custom path. Whereas the path to unrighteousness is a wide, generic path. The path to righteousness is a custom path. It's a path just for you. So in other words, Nobody else, not even my wife, can walk the path that I'm walking. And she's walking on a parallel path, but it's not the same path. She's got her own relationship to walk with Jesus. And so nobody can walk somebody else's path. So it's a custom path. Why is it hard? Because it's only one path, and you are creating it as you walk it. Hmm. <laughs> is it difficult, of course. And you know what? People will look at that and say, what are they doing? Because in the natural, it looks like you're just walking through the bush. Because <laughs> there is no path <laughs> that they can see in the natural. But you can see it. Why? You have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You are, he directs your path. And it gets brighter and brighter. This is all about relationship. You see, we tend to think about it. We tend to not think about it. We just kind of move through life. Sometimes we have, well, we consider long-term plans. It's like, you know, next year I'm going on vacation. That's not a long-term plan. Some people will think, well, you know, in the future I'd like to, um, I want to get married or I want to get a house at some time. That's something indefinitely in the future. Oh, and ultimately, well, I want to retire and I want to retire and move to Miami or something like that. It's like, so there's, there's general ideas that we have that aren't really plans. There's not that much real planning that goes on in life. When you think about it. I'm talking about Christians and non-Christians. But the good thing about it is, when your path is directed by God, you don't have to worry about the planning. Because your steps are ordered of the Lord. So... While you might not be thinking about retirement, he's thinking about where you're going. He's thinking about getting you that house. Why? He wants good things for you. He's thinking about marriage. He's thinking about your retirement. He's thinking about taking care of you, where you're going, what you're doing. That's why it's so important. He's got a plan for you. 
Now you can do your own thing, be out there, and it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, I don't know how I got here, and I really don't want to be here. It's like, well, after the fact, God can do, go a long way towards fixing things, but it's better to get it right in the first place. Walk with him, and he brings you to the right things. He brings you to the good things. And all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. He's taking you where you need to go, whether you even realize you need to go there or not. Sometimes it doesn't look good. But we only see, we only observe, we only experience five senses. We don't, we don't see what God sees. He knows the end from the beginning. Not even the enemy knows that. So he knows how to get us to a place where we have fulfillment, peace and joy in him. That's why it's so important to trust in the Lord with all your heart. To lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And what does that all lead to? He'll direct your paths. And that is our message for today.